In this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to implement RAG in your AI applications using PG Vector. Before we dive in, I'm just going to explain what exactly RAG is and what problem does it seek to solve. RAG basically is Retrieval Augmented Generation. It's a framework for basically improving the model performance by augmenting prompts with relevant data outside the foundational model. So what it seeks to solve is that LLMs are trained on general data that are not exactly specific to your business, your domain, or your organization. And in order to basically improve LLMs responses, you need to provide it with more context on your data, basically, or your knowledge base. Why RAG? RAG allows businesses to tap into the domain-specific information it provides more credible and accurate responses it's a cost effective alternative to fine tuning so fine tuning is an alternative that's expensive it reduces hallucination so this diagram shows a simple retrieval augmented generation pattern which i would explain quickly so you have your knowledge base which could be pdf doc or websites in this particular demo, we would actually be using a website. So you extract the information from any of these sources, then you chunk the information and you embed the information using an embedding model of your choice. Then you store that embedding in the database. So how does this apply from a user's perspective? For an example, a user is coming in with a query, which is what is two plus two? Two plus two, right? So the user is asking, what is 2 plus 2? And in your knowledge base, what you have as the result of 2 plus 2 is 10. What happens is when the query comes in, the query is embedded with the same embedded model which you used in this step. And there is a comparison check or a similarity check that is done on the database that basically compares the embedding with the embeddings in the database that have been built off your knowledge base. So if it finds matches, that becomes relevant data that you need to pass to your LLM. So this is where the real magic actually happens. So you provide your LLM with the data that 2 plus 2 is equal to 10. And when you prompt the LLM, it basically is going to return the result you expect, which is 2 plus 2 is equal to 10. Since this is what this is the relevant data that's relevant for your business. So how does it work in practice? I'm going to be using a node application to show you exactly how this works in practice. This is an, an express application. I'm using OpenAI and for my PG vector Postgres DB, I'm going to be using Superbase. So this is the Superbase client. Also using Langchain. We have just two endpoints. The query endpoint to for the user to query our data basically and the embed endpoint for us to embed our data into our vector database so for the purpose of this video we'll be using this website as our source or our knowledge base this is inbox podge the part of inbox podge we will be using is the FAQ basically, the FAQ page, and we will be querying the LLM on this data basically. But just before we do that, I'm going to show you an example of what it looks like when the LLM hallucinates, basically comes up with answers that are inaccurate. So as you can see here, the question here is, does Inbox Podge work with email providers other than Gmail? And the answer is currently Inbox Podge is only compatible with Gmail. However, we are working on expanding our services to other email providers in future so i'm going to run our express application and i'm going to hit the query endpoints to basically query the llm we have not implemented rag we're going to be querying the llm directly in this case is gpt4 so the question we're asking is what email providers does inbox podge extension work with and based on the faq answer we saw it only works with gmail at the moment so i'm just going to send this request and see what it comes up with, basically. So as we can see here, I'm just going to move this over. Inbox Podge extension works with all major providers, including Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, and Outlook, which is basically false. This is an example of the LLM hallucinating. 
So before we get into how we actually implement RAG in our systems, we're going to have to enable PG Vector. So PG Vector is a Postgres extension. So if you are using Superbase, which I am now, all you have to do is just create extension, if not exist vector. If you are not using Superbase, I believe you have to install the PG Vector extension, then you pretty, pretty much do this, but it's available for Postgres DBs basically. So what does the extension really give us? It allows us to have vector columns and basically make similarity checks. The other thing we need to do is create a table for where we will be storing our context or our chunks. So we have a primary key ID, then we have the content. This would basically store the clear text or the clean chunk. Then the embedded chunk will be stored here. The size of the vector is 1536. And this is because of the embedding model we're using. This is the vector size that it's basically outputs. This is a Postgres function, match documents. And what the function does is it basically does a similarity check between the query embedding and the embeddings in our documents table, basically. So it collects three arguments, the query embedding, which is the embedded query, the query of the user, then the match threshold, which I'll explain later when we look at the code. So the match threshold is basically how much of a match should the query embedding be to the embeddings in the document. And the match count is how many documents that meet this threshold should we, do we want our function to return, the match document function. This is pretty much what we return. We return the ID, the content and similarity. So we return the ID of the document. We return the content, which is the clear text. And we return how similar, which is a similarity. We return the similarity of the clear text, pretty much from documents. So the way clause here is just doing what I mentioned, which is checking the threshold. If that particular embedding in comparison to the query embedding meets this threshold, then it should be part of the result. And we order by similarity, then we limit based on match count. Now let's get into the actual code. As you can see, I mentioned it's an Express app. We have the open AI client and we have the super base client. I'm going to show you how the embed works. So we go to the embed, generate embeddings function. So generate embeddings function is the function that basically generates those embeddings and actually store them. Actually, we could literally call this store embeddings, to be honest. But yeah. I mean, it generates and stores the embedding, but yeah. That's what it does. Yeah. So this line here is using Cherry web-based loader, which is from Langchain. So Langchain provides a lot of loaders, um, document loaders. There's also the Puppeteer web-based loader. So depending on the type of document, depending on the type of website, um, you could check out the documentation. I'll drop a link in the description. This line basically loads and scripts the content of this FAQ page. We're also using the recursive character text splitter. We're using this to basically split the content that we get from this step into chunks. This is how basically we split documents. Then in this line, we iterate over each chunk then replace every new line in the chunk with basically space, simple space. Then we create the embedding. So why do we redo this? OpenAI recommends that we basically remove new lines before embeddings to improve the result of our embeddings. This is the OpenAI client using the embedding API to embed this clean chunk using this embedding model. At the time of making this video, this is the latest embedding model. So based on the response, we get the embedding. Then we insert using Superbase clients, we insert 
the content and the embedding into the document table. Straightforward. We basically return promises. Then we run this using promise.all. So I'm going to be running the embed endpoints. This should basically store embeddings in our vector DB or our vector column to be specific. So as you can see, successfully embedded. So we're going to check our table to see what that looks like. This is our document table. We should see content. Uh, so as you can see, this, this, this are the contents splits into chunks. That's the content of our FAQ page with the embeddings just beside them. So I'm going to show you exactly how we basically now implement RAG in our query. So if you remember this diagram, we are at this step, basically. We've handled this step, the embedding, storing the embedding to the vector database step. In this, in our case, just the vector column step. We could use something like Pinecone, but we decided to use PG vector extension because it's easy. Why not? The next step we need to handle now is the query. How do we make sure we, we are passing relevant data to the LLM? I'm going to show you that in code. So the query endpoint handles that. So we go to handle query. We basically do the same thing. We remove new lines from the user's query and we create embedding using the same embedding API embedding model. Then we get the, once we get the embedding in the response, we call the Postgres function. So this is how we call the Postgres function using Superbase. So depending on the Postgres client you're using, you could probably do this differently, but it works the same way. So we call the match documents function that I showed you earlier, and we pass in the three arguments, the embedding as, as the query embedding, then the match threshold. So depending on the type of embedding model, you are working with, you would need to experiment with the threshold, basically. I have found that they behave very differently. But like I explained earlier, the threshold is just how similar should the embedding, that's the query embedding, be with the stored embeddings of your knowledge base. So with match count 10, we want to return at least 10 documents that match the threshold criteria. So this is where we combine all the relevant documents that was captured in this step. We combine the actual content, not the embedding, because the LLM is going to use the actual content. We join them, then we use that to create our prompt. I'll just go through the system prompt. System prompt is simple. You are a representative that is very helpful when it comes to talking about inbox budge. Only ever answer truthfully and be as helpful as you can. For the user prompt, this way we pass in the context sections. So, and we say a question. Based on the user query, answer a simple text. So the model we're using here is GPT-4. We're using the completions API, the chat completions API from OpenAI. For temperature here, temperature basically defines the creativity. How creative do we want our model to be? Zero indicates zero creativity. Then the higher the number is, then there's more creativity. So let's see how this works when we run the endpoint. If you remember, we basically query the LLM, asking it what email providers does the inbox podge extension work with and it pretty much hallucinated what we expect it to do now that we've stored our embeddings is it should basically give us the correct answer so we're going to try that out now so what email providers does the inbox podge extension work with so what's that so it says inbox podge currently only works with gmail however they are planning to expand their services to other email providers in future. As you can see, that basically is using information from our knowledge base rather than coming up with an answer from Tin Air. And that's simply how to implement RAG in your application. We're just going to walk you through exactly what we did. We had our knowledge base, which is the inbox page FAQ page. We extracted it using Langchain. We chunked it using Langchain. Then we embedded it using OpenAI embedding model. Then we stored it into a vector column using PG vector. Then when a user query comes in, which is asking uh, what email providers inbox podge supports, we embed that query. We use the match document function to figure out which documents 
are relevant to this query then basically augment our prompt with the relevant data then response is generated using this relevant data so you could basically say rag is a way to augment our prompts and make our ai app smarter give the llm relevant context to basically answer our query and that's about it so let me know if you have any question feedback suggestion you can leave a comment below and if you enjoy videos like this don't forget to like and subscribe bye